everybody. I am in the roastery today, as you can see. We are going at it. We've got the both of these machines roasting away. So I'm gonna take you through basically one roast from beginning to end. I'm gonna explain what is happening during the roast and how that's happening, why that's happening, what we're doing to the coffee from beginning of the roast to the end of the roast. So let's go.
and you can see Haley is using the pad here, which is connected to the roaster, which that's basically the control for the roaster, um, turning the burner percentage up or down. With this machine, the Loring, that's basically all you can control is how much that flame is pushing out heat. So we went from, what, 100? We went from 100% heat down to 90, down to 80. Let's check back with the coffee. You can see that there is a color change in the coffee now. So it, it went in as green coffee, this color. And now after, what, uh, four and a half minutes, it's turned more of a yellow golden color. And what's happening right now is called the drying phase. Basically, the moisture is leaving the coffee beans so that the chemical reactions can happen because chemical reactions can't happen in the presence of moisture. So first, we have to drive out that moisture in order to have the, the chemical reactions that cause, that cause coffee to taste like we want it to taste. So the temperature curve is continuing to parallel the uh, reference curve, which is good. Um, so I showed you, this is the inlet temp all the way up, or the uh, yeah, inlet temp, and the yellow is the return temp right there, and the blue is the bean probe temp right there. And these two lines, the squiggly lines coming down, they are what's called the rate of rise curve, which the computer program does a bunch of math to get the average change in temperature of the these uh, lines. So this blue squiggly line that peaks and comes down, that is the average rate of rise of this curve going up. So as the rate of rise decreases, that means this is going up at a lower rate, if that makes sense. This yellow one is the rate of rise curve for our uh, return temperature. The reason that these are important is it helps us to understand how quickly the beans are taking on heat and how quickly they are reacting to changes in uh, changes we're making to the roast, whether we're putting in more heat or taking it out. Um, well, I guess you don't really take heat out. Putting in more heat or lowering the amount of heat that you're putting in, um, and also how quickly the beans are taking on that energy because different densities, different processing methods, different coffees take on heat at a different rate. So here we go. Let's check back with the coffee. Now we're at seven minutes, 20 seconds, and it's gotten a lot darker. Still not as dark as we're gonna go, but here we are. So basically most of a roaster's day is standing right here, staring at that screen and that screen and pushing buttons. It's a thrilling life. So we're coming up on what's called first crack. What happens when the beans get rid of all their moisture and um, and the chemical reactions start happening, they build up pressure inside and steam inside because the moisture has nowhere to go. So it builds up pressure on the inside of the beans and then at a certain temperature, they, the beans pop, they crack. So it's called first crack because that's uh, that's what happened. So we just hit first crack, as you can see. So that means that the beans are releasing a bunch of steam, a bunch of energy, and the chemical changes are happening a lot more rapidly at this point. We call this the development phase between first crack and at the end of the roast. So let's see over here. You can see the beans are a bit darker. If you look at the beans in the trier, 
don't know if you heard that, but one of those beans popped. You can also see steam um, coming off of that vapor that is uh, due to the beans releasing that heat and those chemical reactions happening. So it's a sugar browning reaction, basically the same thing that happens to uh, steak or meat or vegetables when you cook them. Uh, and the sugars turn brown because they caramelize. There's a lot of other things that are happening during this time too, but there are too many chemical reactions to really talk about and more than we actually truly know uh, fr from a science perspective. So... You can see they're getting even darker. Uh, and now what we're doing is we're trying to get to a desired end temperature in a desired amount of time. And that time is, depending on who you ask, the time can be very important. But what's also important is the percentage of that time as compared to the entire time of the roast. That's called the development time ratio. So the ratio of development time to the entire roast. Here we are. As we get towards the end of the roast, Haley's going to start smelling the coffee because uh, what we want to do is drop the coffee when it basically smells correctly, when those chemical reactions have all happened. Um, by sensory is that these temperature probes and the readout are tools for us to use to approximate the roast curve but still having uh, being able to smell and taste and sense the coffee is also very important because the temperature probes can sometimes be a little bit off or uh, the, the coffee develops at different rates from batch to batch sometimes. Um, so we still just determine the drop based on sensory uh, analysis, smelling the beans when they're ready to go. So Haley just loaded up the next batch from there. send it out to you. So thanks for watching. Like this video if you liked it. Uh, subscribe, comment below. Do you want to see more roast salons? Do you want to see more videos like this? Do you still have questions about the roasting process? Let me know that in the comments below and uh, I'll catch you next time. Cheers!